Hello, I want to show you how to create a thermal model of a printed circuit board using KeyCut. Thermal model means we are assigning power to some component and add a current to a net. So first of all we have to export files from KeyCut. The files are Gerber files, drill files, the netlist and if available the component placement using an IDF file. Let's start. We start with exporting the Gerber files which is plot and plot everything. Then we export the drill files in Exelon format and finally we export the netlist using IPC D356. Okay, that's all. For the simulation we have to know the size and the origin of the board. The origin of the board is unfortunately not identical in the drawing plane and the Gerber plane. In the drawing plane the origin is 70 millimeters and 147 millimeters. In the Gerber view it, the lower left corner is more or less 5 in X and 0 in Y and the upper right corner is 162 in X and 93 in Y. Don't worry about the minus sign because we are starting here at zero. This we have to know for the simulation model. I opened TRM and already filled the first tab with title and comments and we are now proceeding from left to right building the board. First of all we have to define the size and the position of the board. X start was more or less 5 mm, in Y 0, the length or the end in X at 165 mm and the end in Y more or less 92 mm. Next step is to import the Gerber files into the layer stack. Uh, we have we have a four layer board and what I have to do is to fill in the file names and to assign thickness. That's done. The values are assumptions because we don't know the, the intended layer stack. The Gerber files have to be processed and this is done using the expose button. That's done and we see a three-dimensional model or the first part of the model showing us the top layer, the inner layers, until now without drilled holes and without pins and pads and components. Just for fun I could add the silk screen to see some writing, which makes it a little bit easier to identify components, positions and so on. Next step is to add drill files. We have drill files in Excel and format. One line for the plated, one line for the non-plated. They have to be parametrized, they are through hole. The plating is assumed to be 25 microns and the files have to be transformed. This is the result and finally they will get 3D objects in the three-dimensional board model. Next step is to add the pads from the netlist or the netlist. They come in IPC format. I added the file 
convert and what is in the file is now appearing in a list containing the net name, the component reference designator and the number of the pin ordered in alphabetic order and it's now possible to assign amps or volts to the pads. For example, if we choose, um, for example, uh, this pad having a test current of 2 amps belongs to the 3.3 volt net and we find a counterpart which then has the minus 2 value all of them have the same color. We are done. We can add a component. Unfortunately, there's no file for the components, but it's possible to draw simple rectangles for the components. This is U1. And U1 could get, say, 2 watts of thermal power and we want to know how hot this will be. And this is subject of the simulation. We simply start the simulation using this three-dimensional model. The simulation will first calculate the current density in a net or the voltage drop and the local joule power. And in a second step, it will add the values from the net or the nets and the values from the components to get a total power and a total temperature distribution. We can watch the results. For example, the current density in the nets with a change in layers and we see the voltage drop and all the nets, the 3.3 volt nets has got some electric potential. The temperature loop has started it will take a while until the temperature is there. Now we have the results. Temperature plots are created and we can see them in the standard plots. For example, this one, this is the 2 watt component. This is the 2 amp trace. And we can walk through the PCB in from top layer to bottom layer, watching the temperature. Why is the shape of the hotspot so strange? This is of course a consequence of the copper distribution in this board. Let's have a look at the thermal conductivity maps. This is nothing special. This will give an an impeded heat flux in this direction. This as well, impeded heat flux here and here because it's FR4. And of course, this is also a barrier for heat in left right direction. All of those together are creating this hotspot. The smaller the hotspot, the higher the temperature. Heat spreading does not work at maximum capability. There are other ways to show results. For example, the voltage drop in a three-dimensional view. Or the current density, where we saw that we have a change in in the layers.
etc. We have a report file giving details in numerical form, which is most interesting, the heat generated by the currents. In that case, it's more or less 100 milliwatts. Total power, of course, is then plus two, and a lot of information about voltage drop and, and currents. It's possible to have transient simulations, just simple heating curves, or imported mission profiles from Excel files, and many things more. Thank you for watching this video. Goodbye.